Good morning, folks. It is a wonderful Sunday morning in the world of Northern Ohio, Miller Farms Custom LLC. Hey, we have been slamming out hay. I am super excited to show you guys this video. Uh, today is a little bit more relaxed day. We've done quite a few more bales the previous days, and I didn't really film because, to be quite honest, there's a lot to keep track of and film. I'd like to, but we're doing a bit of uh, area cleanup work. So we're bouncing into like three or four smaller fields. There's a lot of equipment moving. Uh, the mowers are all over the place. It's a lot of different crops. There's a lot of different conditions. The dews are heavy. I know it sounds like I'm complaining, but there's just a, this is a little bit more advanced haymaking, if you want to call it at the moment. So I didn't really have time to get the camera out. We're, we're just trying to take care of stuff. But today is a Sunday. We don't have a whole lot of bales ready. Probably, probably 6,000 bales or so, which with our machines isn't, isn't too bad of a day. So I'm gonna to try to get out there and film everything for you. Right now, Justin is catching up on the final load of yesterday. Yes, we are still on first cutting in the barn. The trucks pull up here. He grabs 42 at a time and he pops them right back in the barn. That is our tried and true Timothy Orchard alfalfa mix with master operator Justin. We sell hay year round, so we don't, as long as it's not raining, I guarantee hay is going out of the barn. Our customers are very good, very accommodating when we get busy this time of year. So I tell them, hey, while the morning dew's up, if you get here before 10, we'll get you loaded up. So we spent this morning uh, loading up customers. Then we threw straw, we put plastic down and then threw straw down on the bottom so we make sure that the floor bales stay all right. Is that fun for you? Sunday fun day. No. What do you mean no? Every day is a fun day. Why are we doing this, Justin? We're doing it to keep the bottom of the bales. What do you mean? So the moisture doesn't wick through it. We got plastic down. We got some straw down. Should Hopefully help. not. Should help it. Good dry hay should be fine. What happens when the moisture wicks up? The bales are no good. No they good. Get musty. They smell. They're bad. No one wants them. There's chances of rain, uh, like 30%, pretty much every day. Right now it's Sunday. When we started mowing last Tuesday, there was chances for Friday night. There was chances for tonight. There's chances for Tuesday and there's chances for this Thursday. Well, we've been lucky. The only chance now that's holding is Thursday. We're dealing with a lot of ground moisture. So my dad has been waking up in the morning. He knows these fields like the back of his hand. He's been farming them for 50 years. He's going out and mowing our driest spots because the ground still is, we really shouldn't be on the fields. We just kind of have no choice. It's, it's late August and we're making first cutting. So he's mowing our driest spots, keeping ahead of the balers about 40 acres a day. So that way, if we do get caught with our pants down in front of a rain, we, uh, you know, you might only lose 8,000 bales or so instead of 20,000. So right now it's all just about hedging our bets. If it were up to us on a perfect year, we wouldn't even be in the fields right now because they're, they truly are wet. I'll try to show you the ground. We're cleaning into a lot of them, but we're not putting the belly of the tire to the ground. So we're just doing what we have to do. We're this year and we're trying to get done with first cutting in time to guarantee that we at least get a second cut up. For the most of our fields we will not be getting a third cutting this year which does kind of hurt the budget. Okay, you do what you can. I need a ride. I need a ride. So Justin has stacked pretty much every single bundle in this barn so far this year. Are you finally getting better at it? I think so. I'm trying. <laughs> His stack looks very good. He's got a system here, so we try to always work in bundles of three, and it doesn't quite fit evenly across, so he'll put two in the middle, and uh, well, that's just what it has to be. Yep. So this is his middle two. So he'll put two all the way up, six or seven high or whatever, uh, six high, 
and then for the rest of the time he'll be grabbing three. This is our JCB load all 53595 with our Stefan system grapple. Uh, it's slightly custom built based on our bale dimensions, I believe, but they have that's their twister rotor or whatever it's called. It angles both ways. You gonna show me how to truck? in the other video, but I was too afraid to drive with him. He's too critical. Who, me? Yeah. See, he shifts with the engine brake. That's a man. <laughs> Drove it a couple times. Square baler's back there. This is, see you at the end of the road, buddy. That's it, man. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> So we did end up making it here in one piece. Truck's not broken down, didn't miss a gear, we're good to go. The old man is almost done raking over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the drone up in the air quick. I'll show you some of the equipment we're working with. It's not all here. Uh, we're kind of all spaced out everywhere. So we'll get it done today, probably in this field with three balers, two bundlers, a uh, telehandler, the four stack, which I'm excited to show you guys picking up the bundles. Uh, and then we'll run probably three semis round robin. And uh, that should be good enough. So the old man's raking it with a little bit of dew on. Coming into the windrow, it's just a hair damp. We'll have to wait till probably after lunch to start bailing. This is a late maturing, like everyone in Ohio, Timothy Orchard alfalfa mix. You're seeing mostly Timothy Orchard here. Um, still getting some pretty decent leaf going into the windrow. A lot of grass. Very nice, uh, stable horse hay. Good color. It looked good in a bale. And the hammer down. Nothing stops that guy, I tell you. I could hop in the other wake, rake for one more pass, but it seems like unnecessary effort. And horses are gonna eat it, I know that. They usually don't back off actual hay, you know. Actual Timothy, actual orchard, actual alfalfa. I've had very few people ever tell me that a horse wouldn't eat the hay as long as it was made, as long as it was made dry, so. You get into some of your junkier fields that are just native grasses or whatever that people bale and you call it hay. When that stuff gets a little older, horses won't eat it. And those guys like to say, oh, this is Timothy Orchard. So then people get a, you know, people get all worried. Oh, my horse won't eat that. But it's not actually Timothy Orchard. It's just whatever.
we are sending loads out. My mom is heading back with our smallest trailer. That does not mean the least skilled driver, just how it added up. We successfully have two semis on the road. Uh, the 36 foot load trail is on the road as well. So I'm caught up with four trucks temporarily. That's Mike Big Stacks Johnson in the four stack. He's doing a heck of a job collecting bundles. Sometimes he chooses to grab three, sometimes he chooses to grab two. I really am unsure when and why and the reason behind his signature two or three, but it's working, whatever. Oh, I just lied, wow, there's one truck here. I, see, I can't pay attention. I get out the strap and I don't know what's going on. So I better get back to loading this truck. The balers are done. I think Carl went home to uh, bale like a four and a half, five acre third cutting piece next to the house. We always get like four or five cuttings on that piece. It's tiled like crazy. Uh, so he's gonna bale that. There'll probably be, I don't know, 150 bales there or something. It's not very heavy right now. And uh, we're almost done here. Huge, absolutely huge day. It absolutely breaks my heart when the next truck rolls up and I'm not done yet. Thank you. Complete failure when the truck's weighing on me. I gotta do better. See, this is what happens when I decide to film and throw the drone up in the air. I get way behind. I did my best to not leave, to not make Thomas wait too long. <laughs> sure, someone will yell about that. Something like that. Enough. Thomas is heading out with the second to last truck. This is huge for us. We're slamming it out. Just getting it done. Short little Sunday. We'll be home. We'll be home in time for a late dinner. Be home by like eight. That's not bad. I like to load at this point in the day facing in the east because the sun is not in my eyes. That is it. The field is all clear. I'm the last one in the field, so if something doesn't get done, it's naturally my fault, I guess. But it looks like everything's done. Not even a full load. I'm gonna get that strapped down. The bare minimum strapped. We're not far away from the farm. Leave the JCB here and uh, We'll take it back to the home farm and see if we can catch Justin in action and load it. Made it home in one piece. We actually caught Justin. He is not done with the prior truck. Let's see what he's up to. So 
this is a very advanced move. He's grabbing it opposite of the intended use of the grapple. And if I had to guess, it's because he twists it a certain way. See, it doesn't want to hang onto that middle one very well. But yep, it's because he's going to the left side. He can only come in at so much of an angle that he, see that grapple only rotates, what would that be, clockwise. So you can only hug those poles so much. He grabs it the opposite way and then see it'll rotate right over. He doesn't really have to be in line with it. That is thinking. Justin never stops thinking. Call him what you want, I'll call him a thinker. <laughs>